This time on Lemons World, we're gonna talk a little bit about one of the most $500 my ass slash why you ruin classic cars to ever race in the series. And of course, I'm talking about the C3 Corvette of Zora Dumkoff Racing. Now this is of course Lemons' first C3 Corvette and it was built by Aaron Brooks, a very talented fabricator from the Pacific Northwest. The story begins where Aaron's wife, Leslie, calls him at work and says, Hey, do we need a free C3 Corvette? Corvette magazine! Of course, the answer is yes in that situation. It was a bit rough and came to them with 33-inch tires uh, set up to go off-roading and no engine. Yeah, and the husband thinks he's gonna restore this car, so he starts accumulating parts for the restoration. At some point along the way, he realizes the car itself is a total piece of garbage. He pushes it into the field behind his house and forgets about it. So fast forward 15 years, divorce papers are filed, the house has to go, and so too does the Corvette. Yeah, and the deal is, Aaron gets to keep the car for free. It's free. As long as he sells all of the new inbox restoration parts that had been accumulated. The wife gets the money from the sale of these parts, and in exchange, Aaron gets to keep this Corvette shell. So Aaron has been around Lemons for years, has raced all kinds of terrible stuff like Pontiac Sunbirds and so forth, and knowing that, he also knew that a small block Chevy was just never gonna be a good idea in a Corvette because the Corvette's not a bad enough idea as it is. <laughs> now, of course, this being Lemons, he and his buddies were talking about how the car was gonna be painted before they had even figured out what engine was gonna go into it. His previous Lemons car was that Pontiac Sunbird done up as a 5.8 scale NASCAR. So that was kind of a clone tribute idea that they had done. The tiny vet down in California had already done Corvette racing livery, so they didn't want to do that. They thought, well, what other iconic r racing livery is there that especially would look completely out of place on a Corvette C3? That answer is, of course, the E30 BMW from DTM in the 1980s. German touring car livery, American muscle. And then, I think they're probably several dozen beers into the discussion at this point. They said, well, we still don't have an engine for this thing. We're gonna paint it like a DTM BMW. Why not make it BMW powered? As it so happens, Aaron's three series BMW track car was right next to the Corvette. They ran, grabbed a tape measure, did some basic measurements and had their aha moment. So this is like 1.30 in the morning at this point, and by 9.30 a.m. the following day, they have a manual E34 5 Series BMW with an M50 straight six sitting on his trailer for 300 bucks. Now that 5 Series, it turns out, had been owned by a 17-year-old and had been treated as most 17-year-olds would treat a BMW. It had been smashed on just about every body panel, so the only thing of value in it happened to be the engine and the transmission. So at this point, he embarks on the task of trying to put the motor into the shell. So the engine is the M50 inline six out of the five series, which is kind of an engine that they made 12 million out of. It's like the German small block Chevy. And the transmission turned out to be garbage, but he just happened to have that three series track car that he was ready to be done with and grabbed the transmission out of that, swapped it right in. The drive shaft is a slip yoke front drive shaft from a Ford truck with a custom adapter that takes the place of the BMW flex coupling. The diff is stock Corvette, although they realize that it has a little bit of a cooling issue. They rigged up a homemade diff cooling system using a Honda Civic power steering pump, belt driven off of the drive shaft, junkyard oil cooler, and a motorcycle radiator fan. So when we asked Aaron about the build, uh, he pretty much qualified everything with the fact that C3s are trash uh, and that the whole chassis is like a noodle. So the front suspension is basically a Chevy Impala from 1958, still on the 78 Corvette. And Aaron applied some typical Corvette high-tech suspension tweaks to the front end using wedges of metal and wood. Wood, what can't it do? This message brought to you by the Wood Council. 
using parts from an Impala to change geometry just to get the thing to steer and track reasonably well. The rear suspension is mostly stock Corvette, except for the lower control arms. Those bent after a couple races, so Aaron built his own, which were of higher quality than GM standards. Cosmetically, and let's face it, this is why this car has become such a lemon superstar. Look at it, it looks awesome. Aaron, like many Lemons people, drew his inspiration from a Hot Wheel that he had as a kid. It was a Greenwood Corvette from the late 60s, so that was kind of the vibe that they were going for. Now, the roof line is pretty low on a Corvette, so they chopped the top off, which also made it look hella sweet. Uh, but it also let them actually fit a driver into it with the roll cage. Yeah, and the rest of it was just elbow grease, rattle cans, and graphic design stolen from 35-year-old BMWs. One of Aaron's coworkers created vector files for all of the logos, which are incredibly clever parodies of the various real German brands. And the paint itself is Rust-Oleum, cut with a little bit of acetone shot through a regular spray gun. So the elephant in the room here is that this thing utterly looks like it's more than $500. And the truth is, there's really not that much money in this car. When you break it down, the car actually comes in within the $500 budget. Yeah, what a lot of people continue to fail to realize is that there are a lot of things in a Lemon's budget that are exempt from the $500 cost. Basically, it's stuff that keeps the driver from dying. So all of those fancy wheels and tires, brakes, wheel bearings, all that kind of stuff, it doesn't count towards the budget. And that's, on this car, a large percentage of what you're looking at. If we break it down by the things that do fall into the budget, Aaron gave us a very specific list. The Corvette cost him zero dollars. Shocks were new, but eBay versions, 140 bucks. The engine and transmission, those were free after he parted out the donor cars. Impala steering arms was a straight across trade for the existing Corvette arms. And the E36 oil pan was a straight trade off of his E34. Mini alternator sourced from a Kubota tractor, 37 bucks. Aluminum sheet pulled out of a scrapyard, 45 bucks. Oil cooler used, $16. A drive shaft adapter, $85. A Honda power steering pump for the diff cooler, 12 bucks. There was a silicone coupler for the intake for seven bucks. Paint and vinyl, $92. Radiator hoses for 28, serpentine belt 15, and a rad fan out of a motorcycle was 20 bucks. And in case you're not keeping score at home, that is $497 even. So as with any build like this, there were some issues. According to Aaron, C3s are And then he goes on to say, no, really, they are an objectively terrible car. Like I said before, the frame is a noodle, the body is built like a cheap speedboat, you can't fit a human being into them. Aaron had to pull the body off the frame and brace it just to build the cage. To create enough room for an actual human driver, he had to drop the floor two inches, cut the roof off, just to safely fit somebody inside. And in the end, Aaron had a car that was worse in every measure than the BMW 5 Series he pulled the engine out of. All of that being said, after Aaron's tweaks, it's not a bad race car. He says it's pretty balanced. Now it'll go into a nice, predictable slide if you push it. The ergonomics still aren't great. It's cramped. It's got manual steering. It's hard to drive for long stints. But all of it, in the end, was worth it. So the moral of the story is, the car looks way more expensive than it is. It looks way better than it is, but it was really just this exercise for an incredibly talented and creative person to see if he could do it. Now, not everybody in Lemons or everybody who follows Lemons can do it, and they see something like this and they think, well, I would have to pay somebody 50 grand to replicate this. That's not the case for Aaron. He's able to do it himself. The numbers check out, so it's totally a legit Lemons car, and in the end, it's awesome. Would we say no to this car? No, we wouldn't. 